ओके बैक वेलकम टू अनअकाडमी अनअकाडमी इज द इंडिया लार्जेस्ट ऑनलाइन लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म नाउ टेक द सपोर्ट फ्रॉम अनअकाडमी फॉर गेट एंड इंजीनियरिंग सर्विस एग्जामिनेशंस एंड गेट सक्सेस इन योर लाइफ अबाउट माय सेल्फ आई जी वेंकट राव आई हैव 16 प्लस इयर्स ऑफ टीचिंग एक्सपीरियंस so for i mentored more than 60000 students for their gate examination at present i am pursuing phd from jnt kakinada and my specialization in phd is wireless cell design now first we check how to get an academy learning app if this app is already in your device it's okay otherwise uh, first install that app and please check what is present inside of that then you get one clear idea on that okay after that what we have to do with this app is it helpful to us or not then after that you can assess that first we check how to get that just go to play store then type an academy and click on install button by clicking on install button this an academy learning app is going to install in your device by open that once you open that an academy learning app it will show what are the different courses available in that and the top educators who are handling that courses okay and different subjects in that each course now here you can observe few of the top educators see if you observe ankit goel sir he is a all india he has a all india rank 1 twice in gate examination okay jaspal singh sir he is a xias officer okay he is iit topper tiwari sir like that most of the top educators you can they get there here are some more top educators now i am happy to announce that uh, we are going to start new batches for gate 2022 and gate 2023 for electrical and students and as well as electronics and communication engineering students there is a batch d batch d it is ascend batch this is for gate 2023 electrical engineering students this batch is going to start from 1st of february 1st of february okay now these are the top educators handling the subjects in this course okay and don't forget to use my code don't forget to use my code during subscription vrao10 to get 10% discount so here i am writing that this is my code vrao10 don't forget to use my code to get 10% discount okay now this is for electrical batch for 2023 assign batch now this is for ece electronics and communication engineering it is a also assign batch for gate 2023 batch d it is also now it is also going to start from first of february first of february next one is evolve batch for gate 2022 evolve batch for gate 2022 this is for electrical people this is also batch d now these are the top educators who are handling these subjects in this course okay during subscription don't forget to use my code vrao10 okay this batch is going to start from february 1st and next evol batch for gate 2022 this is for electronics and communication engineering this is also going to start from 1st of february and don't forget to use my code vrao10 during subscription to get 10% discount so here is my code vrao10 don't forget to use my code vrao10 during subscription i am writing that code here so that is a vrao10 okay so next one is now we move to civil mechanical and chemical engineering now there is a batch evolve batch for gate 2022 this is batch c for civil engineering students it is going to start from 25th of january 2021 so here are the top educators who are handling these subjects for this civil engineering and there is a ascend batch for gate 2023 this is a batch c 
it is already started from 25th of january so here are the some of the top educators handling these subjects in this course and don't forget to use my code vira10 during subscription to get 10% of discount next there is a for chemical engineering students there is aval batch this is a batch a okay for chemical engineering this is for gate 2022 here are the top educators from chemical engineering department are going to handling the subjects of chemical engineering and for this you must thank to an academy because at outside it is a very difficult to get the chemical engineering training for gate and engineering services okay so you must thank to them they provided a opportunity to you utilize this opportunity and crack it next there is aval batch for mechanical engineering this is batch c okay here are the top educators handling these subjects in that and this batch was started from 25th of january 2021 now there is a send batch for gate 2023 for mechanical students so these are here are the top educators handling the subjects in that now it was already started from 25th of january and don't forget to use my code during subscription vrau10 here i am writing that vrau10 to get 10% discount So these are the different disciplines they are providing for gate engineering engineering services mechanical electrical civil computer science and it ece instrumentation chemical production and industrial okay and here are you are by observing this here we have two subscriptions you have one is plus subscription other one is iconic subscription plus subscription is the basic subscription okay so by joining that in this two you get the common facilities that is the your classes are conducted by best educators and live interactive classes and a structured courses and pdfs they will provide to you and live tests and quizzes they will conduct okay here personal coaching is available in iconic bank iconic subscription okay your iconic level, iconic subscription is the next level of the plus subscription okay so try to join iconic and get more benefits now here person personal coach you are you are out of the test you are writing here they are going to conducting their tests and quizzes to you now what are the tests you write in now that your paper is going to be verified from first point to last point and from that they assess where you are strong where you need much preparation okay where you are doing more mistakes everything they are noted it and they will guide you according to that okay what are the mistakes you done in that exam in future okay they will take care of you are not going to do such type of mistakes in future okay so that is a proper study plan they will prepare and they will provide that one to you by following their study plan and uh, proper material what they provided definitely you crack the gate and engineering service examinations all of you know that at present the situation at outside we don't know what is how it happens tomorrow tomorrow okay so please stay at home and whatever thing is happening at outside your learning process cannot be stopped always it should continue okay and next we go on check uh, what are the cost for this and costs are nominal costs so for plus subscription it's a one month cost is 5500 Three months cost thirteen thousand seven fifty. One year cost thirty thousand two fifty. For twenty four months, it is forty four thousand. And in iconic, sorry, after getting ten percent discount, it is going to be this much. By using my code Vrau ten during subscription, you can get the ten percent discount. Okay. So in that. So thirty thousand two fifty rupees it is actually by getting ten thousand ten percent discount you get twenty seven thousand two twenty five. Now we are moving to iconic. In iconic we have two disciplines and one more thing here the beauty is uh, you get EMI option also. Okay, here for twelve months it is a fifty thousand two fifty rupees and for twenty four months it is a seventy four thousand and for getting discount you get this one by forty five thousand two twenty five. Okay and here you get it. 
66,600 after getting discount of 10%. Okay, please don't waste your time. Enroll today itself. Okay, and start your preparation today itself for your bright future. Okay, don't forget to use my code VRAW10 during subscription. Thank you. Now, we are moving to analog circuits. Now, my intention to do this one is so within a few days some of your friends and your some yourself are going to write in the gate examination okay so it's a hard time it is very difficult to complete what are the topic from first topic to last topic in analog circuits okay and compared to last year gate gate syllabus now in this gate syllabus some more modifications they done okay now here the intention is whatever the topics we have important topics we have in analog circuits okay those topics has to be referred once okay and after that we are going to do nearly my plan is uh, to do minimum of 100 to 120 problems has to complete in analog circuits okay so the students who are appearing for the gate and we are going to writing the gate examination for 2021 Okay, definitely they will get benefit from this. Okay, now first we check this syllabus. So the first part of this one is diode circuits. In that we have a clippers, clampers, small signal diode circuits, rectifiers, GNR diode, voltage regulators. Voltage regulators by using only GNR diodes. Okay. Next topic is small signal amplifiers, single stage amplifiers, multi stage amplifiers, and frequency response of that. In this, I cover BJT amplifiers and Fed amplifiers also. And here we are going to covering with respect to this. Next topic here is biasing. Biasing is a very important topic. Biasing also we are going to cover today itself. Now, after that, next topic is op amps. In op amps, a differential amplifier and current mirror. These two are the one of um, building blocks in the op amp. And after that, op amp circuits some op amplifier, some applications by using your op amp. And after that, we are moving to active filters and oscillators. Okay. So I'm going to a quick reference on all these topics. So today's session we go to diode circuits and the transistor biasing okay now just i'm going to take the topics what you have to collect today complete today now our target is to refer these topics today okay diode circuits diode circuits clippers clampers small signal diode circuits rectifiers and general diode regulators finally we move to transistor biasing now first I am going to diode circuits, simple diode circuits. Okay, now my first topic is diode circuits. Diode circuits. Okay, let us, I am taking one diode. this one and I am taking another diode by using these two diodes I am going to forming a circuit here is a resistor let us take voltage V1 and voltage V2 let us and here is output point here is output voltage now let us take it as 1 kilo ohm now my question is my question is what is the output voltage in volts first question 
so here I am taking and take V gamma of the diode is 0.7 volts okay 0.7 volts or you can take V gamma equal to 0 as you wish it's not an issue now in this let us I am taking V1 equals to 4 volts and V2 equals to 5 volts V2 equals to 5 volts okay is it okay sir now okay I am taking ideal diode V gamma is 0 volts now what is the output voltage I think so some of you are feeling that uh, already we see this circuit somewhere seen this circuit somewhere what is that see in this if any one of the diode is on state any one of the diode is on state current is flowing through that once current is flowing through that output voltage equals to i into 1 kilo ohm you get some output voltage if you verify the not gate or gate this is our or gate a b are the inputs let y is output now our out logic is v, y is equals to a plus b the meaning of this one is if any one of the input is any one of the input is high output is high first case uh, i am taking 0 volts for your better understanding let us 0 volts now it is 0 volts your diode is going to be off state now it is 5 volts your diode is going to be on state now your current is flowing like this okay now output voltage is something logic one okay so you are taking diode is ideal diode now it is a diode is on now voltage at this point is 5 volts output voltage is directly connected to this voltage v2 v2 is 5 volts so output voltage is 5 volts okay now the same circuit can be used for OR gate also in OR gate instead of applying the voltage input in terms of volts they mentioned it as in terms of a logic Y logic A and logic B logic A and logic B okay now you can apply either high or low input is either high or low so either high or low you can apply okay now after applying high or low your output also going to be high or low you get now the same circuit at input side I am applying 0 volts and 5 volts 0 volts and 5 volts okay now I want output all the output in terms of volts I don't want the logic I want in terms of volts okay now you may treat that now 0 volts in general we treat it as a low logic 5 volts high logic okay and if you take the CMOS technology for a, in a CMOS technology 0 to 1.5 volts is treated as logic 0 low logic and 3.5 volts to 5 volts is treated as logic high so with respect to that it is a 0 volts low logic 5 volts high logic it's okay for example now the case is different now same circuit I am taking same circuit I am taking four volts and four point five volts four volts and four point five volts this is a diode one and a diode two okay now I want what is the output voltage at the same time what about diode conditions diode conditions 
diode conditions diodes are on or off if on which diode is on or if off which diode is off i want that information okay now see this one circuit is like this you need to apply a open circuit test by seeing that immediately we can conclude that now this voltage is greater than 0.7 so diode d1 is on it is 4.5 it is greater than 0.7 now diode d2 also on state now both the diodes are on state current is flowing through that now output is a high logic okay in general students vision is like that but here situation is a different first we go and identify which diode is on state and which diode is off state after that we can conclude what is the output voltage for that you need to apply open circuit test open circuit test open circuit test what is open circuit test once a diode is there once you have a diode like this just you can this is a, let us take a, okay p terminal and this is a n terminal first you can assume you can treat your diode is off state that means open circuit so it is p terminal it is n terminal now the voltage at this point is vp and voltage at this point is vn okay for ideal diode now after this just calculate vp minus vn for ideal diode for ideal diode if vp minus vn is greater than 0 diode is on state if it is less than 0 diode is off state diode is off state okay once multiple diodes present in a circuit okay you need to apply this condition this test two times for two diodes two times three diodes three times okay by using this test at a time we can identify the position of only single diode that single diode is either on or off state okay now i am applying open circuit test on this on that circuit now this is the first diode this is the second diode open circuit i am taking here is my output voltage point here is the given 4 volts and it is 4.5 volts and this is a vp1 this is vn1 and this is vp2 this is vn2 so vp1 is connected to 4 volts it is 4 volts it is connected to ground because once both are open circuit no current is flowing through that current flowing through this one is zero zero amps so it is connected to ground so vn1 equals to zero volts similarly vn2 also zero volts now vp2 equals to 4.5 volts 5 volts okay now here vp1 minus vn1 equals to 4 volts and vp2 minus vn2 equals to 4.5 volts so both are greater than zero so from this what we get both the diodes are on state but just before we mention at a time we can assess the on state of single diode so in these two diodes which diode is on first okay we need to identify in these two this value is greater than this one therefore vp2 minus vn2 is greater than vp1 minus vn1 so therefore d2 is on first is on first 
now i'm going to writing the equivalent circuit of this given circuit with d2 is on so once d2 is on now the circuit is like this this is a d1 now d2 is on state output so it is 4.5 volts it is 4 volts it is a diode one now applying open circuit test on this circuit to identify the position of diode one because d2 position was changed open circuit test i am going to applying on this now it is open circuited d1 already d2 identified we identified it is on state like this here is output now the given it is 4 and it is 4.5 volts so the we need this is vp1 and it is vn1 so vp1 value is 4 volts vn1 value is 4.5 volts therefore vp1 minus vn1 is less than 0 negative it means d1 is off so by making d2 on and d1 off the equivalent circuit we can draw like this it is off state d2 is on state here is the system R. 4 volts it is 4.5 volts it is now output voltage by observing this output voltage are directly shorted to 4.5 volts therefore output voltage is 4.5 volts that is first on now d1 is finally off state and d2 is on state okay so like this you can solve this problem so clear so even 3, 3, 3, 4, 5, whatever the number they give, okay, by applying this condition, you can identify. From this problem, what we identify? I am going back to this problem. What we get finally? What I get a conclusion from this is, see this. Here, you can connect multiple number of gates, diodes like this. Multiple number of diodes like this, like this output voltage is equal to the highest value of the input highest value of the input that's it okay and only that respect to diode is on remaining diodes are off state clear that is the conclusion so for this circuit we verified by observing a logic what happens by observing some dc voltage to that what happens we verified now i am going to applying some waveform at input side and I am going to check what happened to that. Now this is our circuit. Now let us take A input and it is B input. So diode 1, diode 2. Here is output. Now So these are the inputs they given. A input is a square wave. Let us take A is square wave. And B is triangular wave. B is triangular wave. like this yeah so this is the a input and this is the b input now i want output waveform output waveform see from previous result in previous result what we observed so the output is equals to highest value of the input so 
but here inputs are changing values are changing it is a signal now i'm going to writing the output waveform is from here to here b is, a is high so output is this much once a is high d1 is on state from here to here from here to here b is high so b is high b is high okay now from here point d2 is on state d1 is off state and again a is on high compared to b now for negative this is negative part for negative part both the diodes are off state output is zero now from here to here a now it is b and it is a okay so this is the final output waveform okay now finally the output waveform is a composite waveform composite waveform of a and b a positive composite that too okay a positive composite of a and b that means a positive envelope you are going to be getting composite signal combination of both okay a positive envelope of this composite signal you are getting at output that is output waveform so if you want i am going to drawing that waveform okay right so this is the problem so like that you can solve the diode circuits what they given okay next so next part or next topic is uh, diode clippers diode clippers diode clippers see clipping means a portion of the output signal is going to be reducing clipping okay based on the diode condition by placing the diode either series or shunt to the source okay you can make a portion of the diode is going to be clip okay now here we have different clippers series clipper shunt clipper biased clipper and unbiased clipper okay for every diode circuit you should know the transfer characteristics of that and output waveform of that okay you should be thorough with these two for any circuit first i am taking a simple diode circuit so this is the first circuit i am going to take it so r this is a d1 so here we take output and here we are applying input just assume default default input is 10 sin omega t 10 sin omega t this is the input waveform 10 sin omega t input i am applying default it is vi of t so which is 10 sin omega t or 10 sin theta okay now fine see in this circuit if diode is on state diode is on state it behaves like a short circuit for diode is on state this is the equivalent circuit diode is short circuit here is input here is output output is zero if diode is off state it is the equivalent circuit we know that this is output now here output equals to input output equals to input here output equals to zero output equals to input only two possibilities to get the diode on state to get the diode on state you need to apply a short circuit test now let us take this current is i This current is I. 
okay now so here i am assuming ideal diode sir ideal diode for once a diode is on state on state you can write current i is equals to vi by r for diode on state i greater than 0 for diode on state on i should be greater than 0 just i am applying that condition on this i greater than 0 so once i greater than 0 vi by r equals is greater than 0 therefore for vi greater than 0 your diode is on so here vi greater than 0 diode is on once a diode is on output equals to 0 and for automatically remaining one is vi less than 0 for vi less than 0 diode is off output equals to input now these things i am going to be placing on a transfer characteristics transfer characteristics means it is a plot between input and output so input and output input and output ideal conditions this is the plot plot for input and output okay here this is input and it is output both are follows to each other and this it makes 45 degrees now with respect to zero we need to differentiate it it is the region where vi greater than zero and it is the region where vi less than zero once vi greater than zero you mentioned diode is on state so diode is on state once a diode is on state <coughs> so once a diode is on state our output equals to zero so from this output equals to zero so here vi less than 0 diode is off state once a diode is off state output equals to input so once output equals to input just follow that just to follow that plot okay here output equals to 0 output voltage equals to 0 now this is the transfer characteristics the red one is the transfer characteristics from this i am going to writing the output equation output waveform how to draw the output waveform see this now it is the output voltage output voltage time so your plot is in between these two from this only but your input waveform is this is your input waveform input waveform is like this positive half as well as negative half but at output you are getting only this part this part at output okay now i am keeping this is suppressed so now your output waveform is it is suppressed this part is suppressed that means output zero here now negative portion as usual we are getting as usual you are getting okay finally your output waveform is like this like this this is your output waveform okay so this is transfer characteristics and this is output waveform next i'm taking one more circuit let us take i'm taking few circuits and i'm giving plus two volts here or i want output waveform of it so next one is taking diode here
फोर वोल्ट्स हियर यू आर अप्लाइंग वी आई हियर वी नीड टू टेक आउटपुट okay here i will tell you a simple technique how to get the how to identify the output wave form effect so let us both the cases input is 10 sin omega t 10 sin omega t then sin omega t previous circuit we observed positive portion is clipped off now first identify you need to identify the given circuit is in given circuit which portion is clipping either positive portion is clipping or negative portion is clipping you need to identify that here diode positive terminal p side connected to output it means positive peak is going to clip in this diode n terminal is clipped because n terminal is connected to output side so a negative portion of the input signal is going to be clipping diode n terminal is connecting at clipping side that means output side n connected to output side that means negative portion is going to clip so far we concluded in which direction it is going to be clipping positive direction or negative direction now it is clipping positive direction a positive peak is clipping up to plus 2 volts it is going to clip here is let us take somewhere 2 volts plus 2 volts positive portion is going to clipping up to this point positive portion it is clipping up to this point up to this point now at output you get this portion remaining is output like this similarly here it is minus 4 volts so it is going to clipping up to minus 4 volts so minus 4 volts okay now your final wave form is this is the final wave form. final wave form okay just by identifying the circuit and the options you can easily identify which part it is and we call it as shunt clipper shunt biased clipper it is called series biased clipper okay because it is in series with the input okay these are the simple clipping circuits for example i am taking one more circuit so so let us take it as 5 volts and it is minus 5 volts here is the output and here is input okay now i want output wave form first to draw the input it is a 10 sin omega t 10 sin omega t so that means positive peak is 10 negative peak is minus 10 okay so it means it is plus 10 and it is minus 10 minus 10 okay here two reference voltages they given two reference voltages they given one is plus 5 volts other one is minus 5 volts so plus 5 volts here is one reference plus 5 other one is minus 5 here diode p terminal is connected to the output side p terminal positive terminal p terminal of the diode connected to the output side it means positive peak is going to clip up to plus 5 volts 
cos 2 peak is clipping up to plus 5 volts. Next, similarly, negative peak is connected to output side at the same time negative peak also that means n terminal al diode also connected to the output terminal okay so negative portion is also clipping up to minus 5 volts up to minus 5 volts so this is the resultant waveform finally your output waveform is this one so we call it as clipping at two independent levels these are the this is your output waveform that's it okay so far we are using pn junction diode sometimes they will uh, they will give gnr diode in the circuit gnr diode now we take one we do one problem on this clipper with the gnr diode clipper with the gnr diode with the gnr diode clipper with gnr diode okay now in that let us take this circuit here i am taking the gnr diode and uh, Okay, first take only gnr diode input or output so we know the equivalent circuit of gnr diode if you will observe the operation of the gnr diode this is our gnr diode okay now this is let us take it as plus and it is minus it is v if v is greater than 0.7 volts gnr diode is on state gnr diode is on and its equivalent circuit can be written as like this it's equivalent circuit it is 0.7 volts if v is less than 0 v is less than 0 okay at the same time it is less than gnr voltage vz gnr breakdown voltage v is less than 0 and v at the same time it is less than vz also gnr breakdown now gnr diode is in reverse bias off state off state so once it is off state its equivalent circuit is like this third case v is greater than vz sorry 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 it is a negative polarity vz so this is our plot this is vz this is zero your v is greater than vz sorry vz it is v is greater than vz less than zero next if v is here somewhere here v is less than vz v is less than vz because we changed the polarities v is less than vz once v is less than vz gnr diode is under breakdown under breakdown gnr diode is under breakdown so once gnr diode is under breakdown the equivalent circuit of the gnr diode is 
its equivalent is vz vz okay and if you want you can take that uh, zener resistance rz also okay if you are taking rz zero you can take only vz that is the case vz now i am applying these points on this here this is our circuit for circuit is vi r output now <coughs> directly i am going to transfer characteristics first case i want only output voltage let first case gnr diode is on state gnr diode is in forward bias forward bias means vi is negative less than zero then only it is on state so vi is less than zero so once gnr diode is in forward bias output voltage is equals to minus 0.7 volts because its equivalent circuit previously we observed second case GNR diode is in reverse bias, no breakdown. So diode is off state. That is the condition required is a VI is input voltage required is a less than zero. This is the voltage input voltage. Okay, so VI is the VI value is less than zero and greater than VZ. Greater than VZ. And less than zero. Now, here, genodiode is reverse bias. That means here it behaves like open circuit. Once it is open circuit, this is the equivalent circuit. So once it is equivalent circuit, see here is your input, here is your output. So simply output is following input. Output follows the input. So output voltage equals to input voltage. Next one is GNR diode is under breakdown condition. Third, GNR diode is in breakdown. Breakdown. Under breakdown the condition in this sense, your VI should be less than VZ. Then only it is under breakdown. Okay. Now your output voltage equals to break VZ voltage. So based on this, I am going to plot the transfer characteristics. So in transfer characteristics, it is VI, it is V0. Okay. And it is 0.7, minus 0.7, output is point, minus 0.7 you are getting. So just a minute. Now, so waveform is output waveform in between 0 to Vz, 0 to Vz, okay, plus Vz, here it is, output voltage Vz. In between 0 to Vz, output voltage follows the input. So this is input, this is Vz, up to this point, this is 0 Vz, up to 0 to Vz, output follows the input, output follows the input, once Vi is greater than Vz, Vi is greater than Vz, sorry, sorry, so we done small mistake here. Not mistake directly we can draw waveform unit of this 
सिंपल सी तो वी आर कंफ्यूजिंग बिकॉज वी टेक इन इट एज ए प्रैक्टिकल डायोड एंड वी टेक इन इट एज ए माइनस पॉइंट सेवन ओके दैट्स वाई डायोड इज ऑलरेडी एक्चुअली वी नीड टू टेक फर्स्ट पॉजिटिव साइड दिस साइड नेगेटिव साइड दिस साइड फॉलोज द रेगुलर फॉरवर्ड बैस डायोड बट वी टेक एन ऑपोजिट दैट्स वाई वी आर फेसिंग लिटिल बिट कन्फ्यूज नाउ वी आई वी नॉट ओके so output is minus 0.7 output is minus 0.7 here this is the case for vi less than 0 for vi less than 0 output is minus 0.7 this is the region where your vi is less than 0 now if input is in between to 0 to vz 0 to vz okay output equals to input and for vi greater than vz output equals to vz this is your vz let us okay but it is a greater so this condition is your vi is greater than 0 and less than vz this is statement just i opposite it now here output follows the input in this region output follows the input and after this after this output equals to vz this is vz here output follows the input and after that it is vz okay this is 0.7 so if you take ideal diode you can take this is uh, this one is okay output follows input fine so this is the transfer characteristics of this it is minus 0.7 okay so like this you can draw it and sometimes they will combine both gnr diode and pn junction diode at that time you need to apply a regular condition to p injunction diode at the same time gnr conditions to gnr diode separately you need to identify apply okay after applying that you get output at different conditions okay so that is the clipper with gnr diode next we are going to clamper circuits so next i am going to clamper 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 simple sir for example let us take this is your input signal positive portion and negative portion clamper means that means its average value is zero dc value or average value is zero Clamper means it is going to be holding at either a positive peak or at a negative peak or at some value. Its positive peak or negative peak is hold at different value. This is a given input signal. Let us take plus 10 it is, it is minus 10. Now, I don't want this is plus 10, it should be a 0. Now, I am holding this this is going to be a zero this is called a negative clamper now this is regular signal now this is minus 10 now i want this one zero now this is zero this is called positive clamper you observed a one thing or not in a clipper output waveform is decreasing so in a clipper output is less than or equals to input but in clamper output equals to input okay <laughs> so in clamper clamper is also called as a dc restoration circuits dc restoration circuits okay or dc reinserter circuits or dc reinserter and after that now 
let us i am taking a clamper always first part first element should be a capacitor because whatever the dc present in a input signal first you need to remove the dc after that you need to add the dc whatever you want that's why it is called dc reinsertor <coughs> so let us take this circuit like this So it is plus minus VI plus minus V naught. Okay. And another circuit I am going to take. Simple sir, just I explain these two circuits. Now these two are sufficient. Based on this, you can get the remaining things. Let us take two volts. Input and it is output. Okay. Now first input waveform it is our input waveform and it is plus 10 minus 10 i want its output waveform this is input for this circuit now i want this circuit's output waveform okay now See, simple sir, this PN junction diode, P terminal connected to output terminal. It means positive peak has to be hold. Positive peak has to be hold at here there is no reference, 0 volts reference. Positive peak has to be hold at 0. That means it is the waveform. So it is 0, it is minus 10, it is minus 20. That's it. Next case, in this problem, positive peak is hold at plus 2 volts. Now it has to take little bit more and it should be plus 2 volts. Now I am draw. I am going to draw in that waveform also. So plus 2 volts, it is plus 2 volts. Now your output waveform is like this. Like this. So this is plus 2 volts, this is 0 volts and this is a minus 8 volts. Okay, and this is up to, this is minus 10, it is minus 18 volts. This is output waveform for this. Simply identify which terminal of the PN junction diode is connected to output terminal. Now that portion is clamping. Okay. And that is clamped to the biasing voltage what you are going to be representing. Okay. Up to that point it is going to be there clamping. Now this is called negative clamper. The circuit is called negative clamper. Okay. Because positive peak is holding. If the diode position is interchange, for example, if you are taking the circuit like this, now this is called positive clamper, positive clamper. This is negative clamper. Okay, simple. And uh, the application of this clamper is a voltage doubler. So, let us take this circuit like this. A minute so need to change a little bit yeah like this you can take multiple this is this circuit so you are applying some voltage vi so let us vi is a vm sin omega t okay 
now the voltage drop across this capacitor is plus minus vm now the voltage across this one is plus minus 2 vm if you are taking the if you are going to adding capacitors like this now this is called voltage doubler first taking if you are taking the voltage at this point with respect to this point it becomes 2 vm if you are taking voltage at this point with respect to this it is vm now you can add more number of capacitors and diodes to this like this simple now see plus vm minus vm now this is plus minus it became 2 it is a 2 vm it is a plus minus it is 2 vm and one more thing the maximum voltage across a each capacitor is 2 vm except this first capacitor in remaining capacitors the maximum voltage is 2 vm but at this capacitor it is vm now if you are collecting the voltage across this it is vm voltage across voltage at this point with respect to this it is going to be 3 vm okay voltage at this point with respect to this 2 vm with respect to this 4 vm okay up to this two sections we called it as voltage doubler up to the third section we called it as a voltage tripler after this voltage quadruple so that means voltage is increasing okay so voltage multiplier we called it simply voltage multiplier okay sir so this is about clamper and its uh, application clamper and its application clear so after this after this clamper next one is uh, i am going to a gnr regulator gnr diode regulator it's okay later we go to that regulator now okay diode modeling we are going to next topic is fourth topic diode modeling diode modeling see let us we discuss about this one in detail with a with the help of a problem let us the given problem is so here is a 10 volt source resistor simple circuit a diode okay now the current through the diode is id current through the diode is id and they given it as a 1 kilo ohm okay and they given a condition on this the iv characteristics of this diode is followed by i is the iv characteristics of this diode is i is equals to i is equals to v minus 0.7 by 500 amperes for v greater than 0.7 volts and sorry greater than or equal to the given and equals to 0 amps for v less than 0.7 volts okay then what you have to cal calculate the current in this circuit is what is the current in this circuit so current in this circuit now so current in the circuit i what is the current in the circuit i okay and the same current i is flowing through this diode now from this diode the iv characteristics of this diode is represented by this equation i equals to v minus 0.7 by 500 amperes for v greater than or equal to 0.7 volts equals to 0 amps for v less than or equal, less than 0.7 here options are very very important in this problem see first option they given 
it has a 10 milliamps option b 9.3 milliamps option c 6.67 milliamps and option d 6.2 milliamps 6.2 milliamps okay see so we need to calculate current i fine from diode characteristics from diode from diode current equation or from diode current equation we can write diode current id equals to i naught into e power v d by eta v t minus 1 so by omitting this id is approximately i naught into e power v d by eta v t we can write so eta, e, eta is ideality factor 1 for germanium and 2 for silicon v t is a volt equivalent of temperature okay now v d means this is the voltage across the diode i d means with respect to this this is the current i d i naught is the reverse saturation current i naught okay for your better understanding later you can take i dot equals to approximately 1 microamp as well as uh, i am taking eta is 1 for easy understanding purpose okay now this is equation number one two parameters are there and from circuit we can write from circuit we can write i can be written as 10 minus voltage across diode is vd by 1 kilo ohm that is the current i this is the equation number two so equation number one represents the from the same circuit diode and equation two also representing the circuit equation one representing the diode in the circuit equation two representing the complete circuit but anyway whatever the current here you are saying id you are saying this current is id but they are saying this current is i so both are equal okay now just equate or simplify these two get the values of two variables id and v naught are the two variables here we don't know these two values now we need to get two values of this to get the two values we need two equations or two relations between those two variables here is two equations but you can't solve these two directly because this is exponential representation this is a linear representation okay it is not possible to solve directly these two equations that is the problem so if you are defining your diode like this that is called exponential modeling or exponential modeling of your diode now that means if you check once the vi characteristics of your pn junction diode like this it is v it is i your plot is like this this is your plot somewhere here you have v gamma v gamma somewhere here threshold voltage or cut in voltage okay and here you can relate i equals to approximately i naught into e power v by eta v t like this you can relate it this is called exponential modeling exponential modeling okay 
but practically it is very difficult to define your diode in exponential once you are defining your diode in exponential okay it takes more time to calculate what is the modeling how can you define everything we verify in terms of transistor there we can observe in, identify in detail okay while discussing about the transistor amplifiers now next one is this is i i not into e power v by eta vt fine from circuit this is the equation we drawn so both are very difficult to simplify so after solving these two equations you are going to getting one value that is a vi this is the point after solving this i got this is the current equation this is a, this much is the current value and this much is the voltage value i got now this is the point i comma v sorry v comma i this is called operating point of the diode at this point your diode is operating now in this plot now this point is very important to me in this characteristics and this point also very important to me now i am going to be just joining these two now i am by joining those two i am going to drawing a plot joining those two i am going to writing a plot v it is it is i okay okay i am writing this is id for better understanding purpose it is vd just a minute we taken it is id vd we taken okay So it is I, it is V. Okay, now this is the plot V gamma here it is, and here is ID comma VD. At this point, we have ID comma VD or VD comma ID. This is the operating point. Now this is a straight line. I am going to writing the equation of this straight line. equation of straight line is uh, y is equal to mx plus c mx plus c now y is equals to i m equals to slope of this differential between now this point is coordinates of this one is v comma v gamma comma v coordinate comma i coordinate zero now this i equals to difference between y coordinates by difference m is equals to di difference between y coordinates by difference between x coordinates okay difference between y coordinates is id minus 0 by vd minus v gamma vd minus v gamma into x on x axis we have a voltage v plus c C is simply V gamma or if you are taking C and substituting that value also you get the same. Now I is equal to I is equals to V by sorry sorry. x plus c okay see let us keep it now i am going to concentrating on this this is we can write this part is v by delta i am taking this is a delta id delta i and this is a delta v okay del v by delta v by delta i delta v by delta i okay now you get 
this delta v by delta e is called dynamic resistance of the diode rd is dynamic resistance resistance okay now by applying the substitute this rd here okay now it became 1 by rd from that we get the value of c now this is so i equals to v by rd plus c now get the value by applying boundary condition here boundary value is at v is equals to v gamma i equals to 0 so at v equals to v gamma i equals to 0 just substitute this so 0 equals to v is v gamma by rd plus c from this c equals to minus v gamma by rd that's it now take that and substitute here now finally you get i equals to current to that v minus v by v rd plus c minus c value is rd by v gamma by rd v gamma by rd so that is v minus v gamma by rd okay that is the i value now just go back to this now if you are representing your diode characteristic by this plot in this sense your current should be equals to v minus v gamma v minus v gamma by rd for v greater than v gamma after v greater than v gamma only it is defined this is amperes for v greater than or equals to v gamma and equals to zero your current is zero in this region so this is 0 amps for V less than V gamma. This is called piecewise linear model representation. Piecewise linear model representation. So this is one of the modeling. Okay. Now I am taking, I am going to doing a little bit modification in that plot. See, so far our plot is like this. It is the V and it is I. And your plot is like this. Like this, like this. Somewhere here we have V gamma. Now it is having some slope like this. Now whatever the plot here we have like this. I am going to be moving this plot. Study. Moving this plot in this direction. Like this, like this. And I am making this one like this. This is the plot I am keeping. Now, this is my plot. I am going to dividing or modeling my PN junction diode like this. I want to model a my model my PN junction diode like this. This is V gamma. So what it is? It means in equation point of view i equals to see this low in this here we have some delta vd by delta id that value is something here but delta vd is zero here our equation is from piecewise linear model from, from piecewise linear model piecewise linear model We are writing I equals to V minus V gamma by RD. RD is nothing but a delta VD by delta, sorry, delta V by delta I. Our intention there is delta V by delta I, delta I. This is our equation. Okay. Now, see this. In this, from this plot, delta V equals to 0. 
here from this delta v equals to 0 but delta i is something here i equal to 0 here i is increasing something but delta i is increasing something okay but delta v equals to 0 no change in the value only at this point voltage is v gamma so delta v equals to 0 now i equals to v minus v gamma by 0 which is in infinity therefore now i am defining my current i is equals to in infinity for v greater than or equals to v gamma and equals to 0 for v less than v gamma okay you can define your diode like this also that is this modeling is called constant voltage drop model constant voltage drop model model okay <coughs> now i'm going to another model we have that is so this is your plot okay now i'm taking that plot this is the present plot i v so here is v gamma now in this case what i am doing is i am going to taking v gamma v v gamma to zero i am making i am making moving this plot towards this side and keeping the plot like this so now finally now final plot is like this like this this is my plot this is v gamma so v gamma equal to 0 now we can write this equation as i equals to infinity fine for v greater than or equals to 0 volts and equals to 0 for v less than 0 volts this is amperes this is called ideal model ideal model ideal model okay ideal model now i am going back to the circuit going back to this problem yeah now see this from this given data you can easily get the value easily get the value so that value is see from this i am writing i is equals to the given v minus 0 0.7 by 500 okay so v is the drop across the diode now from this and from circuit we can write by applying kvl 10 is equals to i into 1k plus v just substitute i value here it is v minus 0 0.7 by 500 500 means it is 0.5k into 1k plus v that is 10 equals to okay now this is a k now this k and this k gets cancelled now 10 equals to v it is 1 by 2 so 1 sorry it is now it is 2 into v minus 0 0.7 plus v okay now it is 10 equals to 3v minus 1.4 so 3v equals to 11.4 and v equals to 11.4 by 3 take that v value substitute here Okay, now you get the I value. Now, just a minute, I will take calcium and uh, we will solve this. <coughs> 11.4 by 3. It is 3.8.
3.8 so we need i so from this v 3.8 i am substituting 3.8 minus 0 0.7 by it is 0.5k okay now it is a 3.1 3.1 milliamps sorry by 0.5 milliamps so that is 6.2 milliamps that is the answer 6.2 milliamps okay now the intention behind the explaining the different modelings here is okay based on because of these options what they given now check this is the piecewise linear model what they given okay now <coughs> next one you are going to be defining or from this you can take the v value and one more way is uh, just you can take the v value from this 500 i plus 0.7 substitute that v value directly you get the i value clear now from this circuit this is the option we got for this problem 6.2 milli for example if i am going to take if i am going to take ideal diode that means sorry constant voltage drop model like this if plot is like this then what i want to do okay now we concentrate we check that one once already same way we get 6.2 we get another way see this now first one is piecewise linear model piecewise linear model this is v gamma this is v and i in this case whenever you have a diode this is your diode and you are saying and at the same time you are saying some equation current equation for this and that equation is i is you are saying it as v minus 0.7 by 500 so I am taking 0.7 is V gamma. So I is 0.7. In place of that, I am taking a standard value V gamma by RD. In this case, we can write V equals to I into RD plus V gamma. So or V gamma plus I RD. It means whenever you have a diode like this diode like this and current through the diode is i voltage across the diode is v it can be represented by this equation v gamma plus rd it is v gamma now this is i this is going to be v like this you can represent okay now i am going to replacing this one this circuit in this di diode so and i simplify try to simplify see it is v gamma i am replacing this diode by v gamma v gamma and resistance rd rd v gamma so they given 0.7 so it is 0.7 this is 500 it is 0.5k okay now get the i value from this directly we can get it by applying kvl to this we get 10 is equals to 0.7 plus i into 1k plus 0.5k 0.5k now i is equals to 10 minus 0.7 by 1.5k 9.3 by 1.5k 
so that is 6.2 milliamps 6.2 milliamps see this we got this so that is the option answer what we get but here my intention is not from problem not only this problem even sometimes they may give the problem in the form of like this in the form of a plot they may give so the vi plot vi plot of the diode follows this one then get the value of this okay they may ask in that form also next one after that next one is next i am going to next modeling what is our next modeling just we made we this is our vi plot constant voltage drop model in constant voltage drop model we take this rd value zero okay rd value zero once it is zero once rd value is zero once rd is zero 10 minus 0.7 by 1k now i became 10 minus 0.7 by i is i is 10 minus 0.7 by 1k in this circuit from this because it rd is zero now it is 9.3 milliamps 9.3 milliamps this is 9.3 milliamps this is the case this is the case for if you define your diode like this 0.7 volts okay next v gamma we made zero next now if i take this one zero this one also short circuit then i equals to 10 by 1k 1 milliamp 10 by 1k 10 milliamps this is the answer if they give your plot of vi plot like this like this like this now this is the plot for this one for if vi plot of diode is like this this is the answer for this this much for this this much now only one is left left that is a exponential for exponential exponential is the exact model now exact value is this one but in this problem it is 6.0 okay but now i am going to my intention is to give the different possible conditions different possible options okay so this is the small signal modeling of the diode okay and uh, based on this we go for some problems uh, for a problems we have a separate session they will there we will discuss about these things in detail okay next one is uh, i am going to rectifiers rectifiers So, more or less, uh, most of the students are familiar with the rectifiers. Okay, now I will give you the overview of this. After that, I concentrate more on uh, transistor biasing because there is a definite question from transistor biasing. Okay, just a minute, we start the rectifiers. Now, so rectifier, first what is rectifier? So the rectifier circuit is a part of the power supply. It is a part of the power supply. We call it as a regulated power supply, RPS. Generally we call it in our lab, RPS, regulated power supply. The purpose of that regulated power supply is whatever the input signal it means we have a signal in the form of ac signal this is our ac signal we generally represented this one is a 230 volts or 50 h signal we represent like this okay now this is our ac signal so we convert this ac signal into a dc signal by using rps regulated power supply this is a dc signal okay now generally two quant two quantities we are using to represent ac or dc one is a dc voltage or dc current other one is rms voltage or rms current 
VRMS, IRMS or VDC or IDC and IDC. For a pure DC signal, for a pure DC signal, RMS value equals to 0. And for a pure AC signal, DC value equals to 0. DC equals to 0 for this. Now, my intention here is to convert AC signal into DC signal. That means, whatever the input signal you given, okay, I want to make for this DC 0, it means its RMS is maximum. RMS is high. For this, DC is high. I means purely it is DC. Now, our intention is completely to convert, to make RMS value of the signal 0 and to increase the DC component. That is our intention. Okay. That is what we are going to do using a rectifier circuit. That is a part, rectifier is a part of RPS. What is RPS? What is the block diagram? We check later. Now, why you are going to converting AC to DC? That is our next point. The intention, be, the purpose of converting AC to DC is, you can take any electronic device or electronic appliance electronic circuit it works on dc supply so we need dc to operate that for example take chris take mobile for mobile charging you need a dc so we need dc but it means we have ac so to convert that ac signal to dc signal we are using rps regulated power supply in regulated power supply diode circuit is a part in that rectifier circuit is a part of it now, if you take the RPS, now I am going to representing the RPS. First, we have a step down transformer. First block is step down transformer. Step down transformer it is. step down transformer next block is diode circuit we call it a rectifier circuit rectifier circuit after that we have a regulator regulator and after that, we are going to, okay, I'm adding that filter also. So, rectifier circuit and, okay, I add filter also for better understanding purpose. This is a filter section. Filter section. Now I'm adding regulator. But in some, some books they mentioned, they added filters also in rectifiers. This is the regulator regulator now if you check level by level at this point you have a signal like this high voltage signal high value now by using step down the strength of this signal is decreasing AC to AC simply we are doing conversion small signal we are going to be getting Now, by using rectifier circuit, either half wave rectifier or full wave rectifier you can use. Okay, by using half wave rectifier, only positive halves will present at output side. By using full wave rectifier, both positive half and negative half is going to present here. This is the waveform we are getting at this point. And filter output is a waveform like this. like this and final regulator output is this much here this is called pulsating dc pulsating dc this is fluctuating dc fluctuating dc and this is called dc so by using rectifier circuit we are going to converting ac input signal into a pulsating dc 
okay and that pulsating is going to be a pulsating signal you can call it now this pulsating is converted into a fluctuating dc or fluctuating signal by using filter section and by using rectif regulator you can convert that fluctuating dc into pure dc signal at level by level what we are doing amount of rms signal rms component of that signal we is going to be decreasing and dc component is going to be increasing and to represent how much amount of rms component or fluctuating component generally we call it ripple components or ripples present in a signal we use a parameter that is called ripple factor we use a parameter we call it as a ripple factor by using that term we can identify how much amount of or how much amount part of ac in that and how much part of dc present in that okay now so now i am going to rectify that good rectify half wave rectifier first i am going to take half wave rectifier half wave rectifier half wave rectifier so this is the circuit diagram so this is the step down transformer and next diode circuit and here is a load rl okay here is it is connected to mains and this is the input signal you are applying to your diode actually now it's a general operation for positive half diode is on here diode is on here diode is off once a diode is on current flowing through that now you get the output like this positive half for negative half diode is off output is zero like this like this this is the output waveform if it is input and it is the output okay now let us take this is the current i now i want current waveform i see once the diode is on current is flowing diode is off current is zero now the same waveform you get at output also let us take it is vm peak value of this one is vm now the im equals to now i equals to i is equals to vi into diode forward resistance rf vi into diode forward resistance rf plus rl okay from this i is equals to v by vi by r it is so vi equals to i into rf plus rl so i is equals to vi by rf plus rl now we know the vi value generally we represent vi by vm sin theta or sin alpha let us take now it is vm sin alpha by rf plus rl now this uh, vm by rf plus rl i am taking it as im im into sin alpha am into sin alpha that is the current now this is im so your im value is vm by rf plus rl okay now after this we are going to calculating the rms value and average value for this output waveforms okay now i am writing that values directly for this for this v rms is equals to half wave rectifier output it is vm by pi and i rms equals to im by pi and vdc is equals to uh, this is a vdc sir it is vm by 2 and im by 2 vdc is equals to vm by pi and idc equals to im by pi okay and after this 
input power input power equals to average value of input voltage into current so if you take the transformer secondary there we mention this is the input voltage and this is the input current just substitute voltage and current here and take the average value then you get input power equals to i square rms i square rms into diode forward resistance rf plus rl that is the input power similarly you get output power or dc power because output power is a dc power output power or dc equals to dc power is i square dc into rl because we are taking output at uh, load output at load we are taking i square dc into rl into rl okay by using this we are going to calculate some of the parameters of this half wave rectifier okay now the first and most important parameter you need to measure is ripple factor and one more uh, something they will ask the frequency value okay what is the frequency value of output waveform okay now here the frequency of this input is let us take f here to here it is one cycle and in this also waveform output waveform also from here to here is one cycle so output frequency also same so in half wave rectifier output frequency and input frequency both are equal okay now i am going to representing one by one parameter now the first and foremost parameter is ripple factor what is the ripple factor of that and we are giving the circuits which are having ripple factor value less than 1 we are giving ripple fact uh, for a circuit which is which poses ripple factor less than 1 we are giving high priority okay ripple factor less in the sense the amount of ac component is less and dc component is high that is the meaning of ripple factor okay first i am going to ripple factor there is a standard equation for ripple factor now first parameter is a ripple factor ripple factor is rms value of ac component by dc value by simplifying you get this it is a vrms by pdc whole square minus one you get this by substituting the rms value and all these things here you get approximately it is a one point something uh two one approximately you get so it is a greater than one the meaning of this one is in this ac component is more compared to dc component that's why we are not giving priority to half wave rectifier okay after this ripple factor i am going to efficiency 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 so efficiency is output power by or dc power by input power into 100 in general we represent this in terms of percentages okay by substituting all values in this you get efficiency value is 40.1 40.1 into r l by rf plus rl percent here if you are taking ideal diode for ideal diode rf equal to 0 
then you get maximum efficiency of 40.1%. Sorry, 40.5 I think. 40.5 we get. 40.5. 81 for full wave rectifier. Double of this. Double of this. So if RF equal to 0 for ideal diode, then you get 40.5%. Maximum efficiency of a half wave rectifier. From efficiency, what you are going to understand? Okay. It is nothing but a the ability of the rectifier to convert input power into a DC output power. Okay. The ability of the rectifier to convert input power into a DC power. So its ability is only 40.5%, not even 50%. So because of these two, we are not giving much priority to half wave rectifier. Okay. And after that, we have ripple factor. Sorry, ripple factor is over, efficiency is over. The next one is a regulation, percentage of regulation. Percentage of regulation. So its value is R by RL into 100%. Okay, here the meaning of R is transformer secondary winding resistance plus load resistance. From this, there is a standard equation for this also that is a VDC no load under no load condition output voltage VDC no load minus VDC full load VDC full load by VDC full load into 100% that is the standard equation for that. Now VDC no load is Vm by pi and IDC full load is equal to Vm by pi minus IDC into R. Okay, by substituting that values here you get this. From this what we understand? Okay, it is going to measure change in DC output voltage with respect to change in load current. It is going to represent change in DC output voltage with respect to change in load current that is the percentage of regulation okay next peak inverse voltage peak inverse voltage fourth one is PIV we called it in general it is a half wave rectifier VM full wave rectifier we have two types of full wave center tapped and uh, bridge for center tapped to VM for bridge it is VM so it is going to represent the maximum reversible voltage applied to a diode to withstand its operation okay or the maximum voltage across a diode when it is off state okay when diode is off condition the maximum voltage across the diode is peak inverse voltage okay and next to parameter is tough transformer utilization factor Okay, so it is a DC power delivered to the load by AC rating of the transformer secondary. Its value is 0 0.286 into RL by RF plus RL, RF plus RL. This is the value of TUF. Okay, so for half wave rectifier, TUF value is maximum 0.286. Okay. And so these are the main values for half wave rectifier. Okay, now I am moving to full wave rectifier. Full wave rectifier. Full wave rectifier. We have two types of full wave rectifiers. One is a center tapped, other one is bridge rectifier. Center tapped, center tapped, another one is bridge rectifier. Bridge full wave rectifier. Ok, 
okay most of the things are same for all but uh, in center tab where we have rf in bridge there you have to write 2rf okay except and tough is also different piv also different now first i am taking center tab center tab so this is the circuit diagram for center tab this is the circuit diagram for center tab here is the load okay rf this is connected to mains okay for positive half cycle this diode is on state for negative half cycle this diode is on state so due to this we are getting waveform like this due to this we are getting a waveform like this by combining both you get finally full wave output waveform like this and the purpose of the center wave tra center tap transformer here is for phase splitting purpose this is for phase splitting purpose okay now <coughs> next one now for this waveform we know rms value and average value are these things now average value or vdc equals to 2 vm by pi and idc equals to 2 im by pi and vrms equals to vm by root 2 and irms equals to im by root 2 irms equals to im by root 2 okay by substituting these values we can get the values of ripple factor and everything okay now at the same time i give the bridge rectifier circuit also simultaneously we discuss both because waveforms are same now this is the bridge rectifier bridge rectifier So here we are using single transformer, not center tap, step down transformer simple. Now here is the bridge. This is the bridge circuit. Here is a load RL. Now let us uh, give numbers to this one, two, three, four. For positive half cycle, if you are taking input like this, for positive half cycle, for positive half cycle, D1 and uh, this is the direction of current movement, like this. One, three are on state. For negative half cycle this is the direction of moment of current three one four here it is a two three here two three are on state in this case but anyway we get finally the same waveform and dc value rms values are same for this also okay now i am going to writing triple factor okay and the remaining parameters of this triple factor is previously we got 1.21 so it is a greater than one that's why we are not giving priority to that okay now ripple factor of this one is same equation sir ripple factor ripple factor so we get the ripple factor equation is square root of uh, v r m s by vdc whole square minus one just substitute the values in this by substituting the values you get approximately it is a 0 0.0.43 point four three four five three i think so yeah 
it is a 0 0.4 483 sorry 483 ripple factor for full wave rectifier just check this it is a less than one less than one but half wave rectifier it is 1.21 high value but here it is 0 0.483 low value okay that means ac component is less dc component is more in this that's why we are giving high priority to full wave rectifier okay next i am going to efficiency 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 is previously we got 40.5 percent now it is 81 into rl by rf plus rl okay this is percentage efficiency a full wave rectifier and one more thing this is for center tap or full wave rectifier but in because in center tap at a time only one diode is on state but in bridge rectifier at a time two rectif two diodes are on state so when you are going to applying this one to bridge you have to write two here two rf plus rl okay okay sir next one after efficiency you go for <coughs> ripple percentage of regulation percentage of regulation regulation percentage of regulation percentage of regulation so it is defined as same vdc no load minus vdc full load by vdc no load into 100 now its value is r by rl into 100 percent okay in this case r value is so r value is in this case r is for half wave rectifier we our r value is r secondary winding plus rf sorry rl okay in this case only we have primary winding so sorry secondary winding plus rl okay but two you need to add okay now do one thing this just try derive this this is the secondary winding we are using okay now and this is the equation current direction here because here by taking one diode so this is your rl so this is complete rsw but for every conduction once a diode is on state only we are using half of the secondary winding that's why r equals to rs secondary winding resistance by 2 plus rf that is the value by rf diode forward resistance that is the equation for r okay because it is a center tapper if you are taking bridge rectifier this is for center tapper okay now for bridge rectifier for bridge their full rs we are using full secondary winding we are using that's why it is a r value is r secondary winding plus 2 rf because at a time two diodes are going to be on state that's why it is 2 rf that is the percentage of regulation okay now next point is transformer utilization factor tough tough okay so here tough is for center tapped it is 0 
k and for bridge rectifier it is more than this for bridge it is around 80 plus so sorry 0.8 something 0.81 okay that is for bridge rectifier okay now because of high utilization of transformer we are giving high priority to bridge rectifier there is a only one drawback in bridge rectifier that drawback is it is going to has it has four diodes it is using four diodes that is the drawback in bridge rectifier okay and for center dipole we need a center dipole transformer these are the values of this okay and after that uh, just i am going to write the equations for filters 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 so what is filter the here the purpose of filter is here the purpose of filter is just to reduce the ripple factor reduce the ripple factor that means reducing ripple factor in this sense it is going to reducing the amount of ac component present in a circuit present in a signal sorry now here i am going to using we have different filters inductive filter inductive filter second one is capacitive filter third one is lc filter and fourth one is pi section filter pi section filter and in filter section always your inductor is connected in series and your capacitor is going to be series with rl this is your inductive filter and your capacitive filter is connected always parallel with the load rl okay and l section filter means it is the combination of this inductor capacitor and resistor load rl okay and pi section filter it is a combination simple so capacitor inductor again capacitor okay these are the filters for this filters you can expect the ripple factor values okay so you should know the ripple factor of each and every filter so for this filter ripple factor is root 2 by 3 into mod xc by rl it is rl and mod xc by xl xl that means reactance of the inductor here xc and xl are the two omega components two omega components and for this root 2 by 3 into mod xc by xl okay and now we are going to inductive component for inductive component ripple factor is rl by 3 root 2 into omega naught l and there is a drawback in this the drawback is ripple factor is directly proportional to load in inductive filter that is the drawback in this okay so once load is changing automatically ripple factor also going to be changing so that is the drawback in that to solve that problem we are going to switch over from uh, inductive to lc filter and at the same time if you check the capacitive filter for capacitive filter just take the ripple factor 
Now the ripple factor in capacitive filter is inversely proportional to RL. Here it is a directly proportional, here it is inversely proportional. Once by combining these two that RL RL gets cancelled, finally it is became independent of, independent of RL. That is the LC section filter. That is the LC section filter. Okay. So if you check the ripple factor of this capacitive filter, there it is going to be 1 by 4 root 3 into F0 into CRL. Okay, this is the equation for this ripple factor. So main important thing is it is directly proportional to RL. Here it is inversely proportional to RL. Okay, to remove the effect of this, here we are going to using the combination of this, combination of this, that is in LC section. In LC filter, it is root 2 by 3 into mod XC by XL. Okay, so there is no RL in this, so it is independent of the load resistance. But again here, pi section filter. So root 2 by 3 into mod XC by XL, next mod XC by X, sorry, RL, it is mod XC by XL. Okay, now, Practically, filters are using as a multiple sections. Single filter is not using in practical applications. Multiple filters are going to be using. Okay, please uh, refer these topics once and uh, get the formulas of it. Okay. This is about your rectifier and filter. Now I am going to regulator, GNR diode regulator. GNR diode regulator. See, regulator means which provides a constant output. Constant output. Irrespective of variations of or variations at source voltage, load current and temperature. Generally, your output voltage is changing due to these three parameters source voltage load current and temperature so a circuit which maintains a constant output voltage irrespective of variations in these three source voltage load current and temperature that is the regulator now if you check once your vi characteristics of your gnr diode it is like this So this is the reverse plot. Here, this is the VZ. Now, here is a region. This is IZ, Jenner current. And we call it IZ the minimum or I knee current. I knee current and this is IZ maximum okay see if your GNR current so GNR diode in forward bias it behaves like a regular forward biased PN junction diode regular forward biased PN junction diode it behaves like in reverse bias it behaves like a regulator okay See, if you are maintaining the GNR current in between IZ minimum to IZ maximum, then the voltage across GNR diode is VZ, it is constant. So now the condition is IZ should be in between IZ minimum to IZ maximum. IZ minimum also called as I knee current. IZ minimum also called as I knee current. And here, This is our GNR diode. Plus minus. Okay. Sorry. In breakdown condition, its equivalent circuit is written as like this. It is VZ and it is RZ. RZ. Okay. 
Now, the basic regulator circuit is basic GNR regulator circuit is like this. It is R, it is RL, it is the input, here I am connecting input. So input is a variable voltage, variable input. Okay, now let us take this is the current I and first and four important thing, most important thing, this is your output voltage. The output voltage you have to be take which should sorry this is JNR diode sir. Now breakdown voltage of the JNR diode is uh, VZ. VZ. The first point is output voltage is equals to JNR breakdown voltage VZ. Okay. And this is the JNR current IZ. And this is the load current I L. Okay. Now here are different possibilities. Either input is varying and RL is constant, or RL is varying, input is constant. Okay. Whatever the condition, first we can write I is equals to I Z plus I L i equals to i z plus i l okay now your output voltage is output voltage i l into r l i l into r l see and from this i l equals to i minus I Z. If any change in the input is reflected in the I and that reflection is taken place in I Z. Now I L we maintain a constant. Okay. Now I am analyzing this in at different conditions. So first case. Case 1. input is varying input is varying and rl is constant sir rl constant in this sense il constant that is the meaning of that so once you are saying il is constant rl is constant so you are saying rl is constant so once rl is constant immediately i am going to write your output voltage is uh, I L into R L and from this your load current I L equals to V naught by R L but V naught is nothing but a V Z GNR voltage V Z by V Z by R L so far we know the value of I L okay now take the I Z equation from this we can write IZ also. So IZ equals to I minus IL. Now IZ equals to I minus IL. So I minus IL is nothing but a VZ by RL. VZ by RL. Now I want the I value. So from this you are saying this is VZ. Now I can write I equals to voltage at this point VI minus voltage at this point VZ by R. Now I equals to VI minus VZ by R. Now I want to measure the IZ minimum and IZ maximum for that. If VI is maximum. From this 
it is maximum it is also maximum because if it is increasing it is also going to increase once i is increasing iz also going to increase so vi maximum once vi is maximum from that we can write i is maximum maximum current once i is maximum iz also maximum that is the maximum iz iz equal to iz maximum therefore from this i am going to writing iz maximum is i maximum minus vz by rl similarly i maximum equals to vi maximum by by vi maximum minus vz by r okay similarly you can write minimum value also so ij minimum equals to i minimum minus vz by rl and from this i minimum equals to vi minimum minus vz by rl this is the one case and another case is based similar way you can analyze the next case in that case you can take this is varying that means rl is varying and vi is constant just keep vi constant once vi is constant constant in the sense i is going to constant you can write directly i now i is equals to vi minus vz by r okay now keep i constant okay now vary the rl and vl il from once il is varying iz is going to vary that is the next case okay do that now next topic is transistor biasing before going to that first you should know what is transistor transistor what is transistor what is transistor see basically transistor is a current device it means at output it provides current to, to you transistor is a current device at output it provides current to, to you it should be under your control and it can be controlled from input side it can be controlled by either input current or it can be controlled by input voltage input voltage it can be controlled by either input current or input voltage okay now if you are controlling this with input current we call it current controlled current device and if you are controlling this with input voltage we call it voltage controlled current device and the example for this one is bjt and example for this one is pet okay so finally transistor is a current device it is basically a current device okay so now i am going to defining bjt transistor transfer the input signal current because it is a current device input signal current from low resistance region to low resistance region to high resistance region it transfers the current input signal current or constant current if you are applying some source some input signal at that time it will transfer that input signal current from low resistance region to high resistance region if you are not connecting any source only dc supply you are applying biasing condition 
at that time it will transfer a constant current from low resistance region to high resistance region okay fine okay now i am going to biasing of this today we discuss about biasing of bjt biasing we try to complete next one before going to that you should know some basic information about the transistor so this is the symbol we are used to represent the npn transistor there are basically three terminals in the transistor base emitter and collector always center one is the base the terminal where you place the arrow on terminal that is a emitter other one is collector now the current directions are very important base current entering here collector current is also entering okay emitter current is leaving so from this we can write emitter current equals to base current plus collector current base current plus collector current okay it is basically a current device that's why everywhere i have mentioned only currents now you know that you are going to operate generally the transistor is either in cb configuration or in ce configuration or in cc configuration once it is a current device at output and input we are taking only we are using only current parameters now output current by input current we call it as current gain now current gain current gain the current gain in cb is represented by a term by a letter alpha current gain in ce represented by a letter called beta and current gain in a cc is represented by the term using gamma so there is a relation between these three that is a gamma equals to 1 plus beta equals to 1 by 1 minus alpha this is the relation between these three okay if you want to get this for example i want to get a relation between alpha and beta let us alpha and beta cb ce in cb common base base is common remaining currents are these two okay i write that one also so this is the cb representation base at common collector at output and emitter is at input side here is ie here is ic now alpha is ic by ie and ce emitter is at the ground common side collector is at output side base is at input side <coughs> now this current is ib and this current is ic so beta is ic by ib ic by ib similarly i am going to writing cc also cc configuration cc in cc collector is towards ground common output at emitter here it is base base current output is emitter current ie now gamma is current again ie by ib let us uh, i am going to deriving the equation between this first between alpha and beta so the, we have a standard equation for that that emitter current is in transistor base current plus collector current okay now in this two alpha and beta ic current is the common current now both sides i am dividing with ic now it is ie by ic ie by ic is nothing but a 1 by alpha equals to ib by ic ib by ic is nothing but a 1 by beta plus ic by ic is 1 
okay now from this alpha is we can write beta by 1 plus beta okay or beta is take this one this side now it is a beta is a alpha by 1 minus alpha beta is alpha by 1 minus alpha okay that is the relation next i am going to relating these two uh, so i am taking the same equation ie equals to ib plus ic ib plus ic so both sides i am going to be dividing with uh, common parameter in this two is beta and gamma common parameter is ib so dividing both sides with ib ib so ie by ib is nothing but a gamma ib by ib1 plus ic by ib it is beta so gamma equals to 1 plus beta so this is your beta just add 1 to this so 1 plus beta equals to alpha by 1 minus alpha plus 1 which is alpha plus 1 minus alpha by 1 minus alpha is to get cancelled from this 1 by 1 minus alpha equals to 1 plus beta so these are the equations what we have written there here gamma equals 1 plus beta equals to 1 by 1 minus alpha okay now i am moving to biasing transistor biasing biasing okay see our basic application of transistor is main application is use that one as an amplifier amplifier that is our main application of transistor okay and in our transistor this is a emitter base and collector this is the construction of transistor <coughs> let us i am taking npn transistor so npn transistor i am going to taking emitter base collector so okay you can take npn or pnp it's not an issue so it is let us take okay pnp transistor and it is a p plus n minus p plus in this sense emitter is heavily doped n minus in the sense base is lightly doped collector is p in this sense it is moderately doped you observed or not here there is a junction here there is a junction pn junction and here is another junction that means in a transistor you have two junctions one is junction between emitter to base simply we call it as emitter junction another junction between collector to base similarly we call it as simply collector junction so two junctions you have now emitter junction and emitter junction and collector junction so different ways you can connect this you can operate it or you can bias it i am going to using let us both are using in forward bias both are biasing in forward that means both the emitter junction and the collector junction both are connecting in forward bias second case both are going to operating in reverse bias next one is <coughs> it is going to operate emitter junction is in forward bias collector junction is in reverse bias so these are the different possibilities and one more possibility it is reverse bias and it is forward bias here both are forward bias we call it as saturation region saturation region both are reverse bias cutoff region 
Emitter junction forward, collector junction reverse bias. Forward active region or simply active region. Forward active region. And reverse bias, forward bias. Reverse active region. Reverse active region. Or simply inverted region. You can call it as active region and you can call it as reverse active region. This is region of operation. Now I'm going to here representing application. Here it behaves like on switch. Here it behaves like off switch. Okay, here it behaves like an amplifier. This is our intention here. Amplifier. And here it behaves like voltage divider or attenuator. So practically we are rare conditions we use it. Why because? So simply by taking two resistors also we can design a res attenuator, voltage divider. So that is easy to divide the voltage by using resistors. Okay, but you can use transistor also as attenuator in our IC circuits. Okay, in internal part of the circuit or IC, somewhere you need to divide the voltage. At that point, instead of fabricating the resistors for voltage division, we are going to fabricating the transistor and there we do the voltage division. Okay, because fabrication of resistor is a risky process. That means uh, so much uh, complicated that is. So we can easily fabricate the transistor. We have a well defined procedure is available for fabrication of a transistor. Okay. Now, we are going to concentrate completely on this. Our intention is to use our transistor as an amplifier. If you want to use your transistor as an amplifier, you should operate your transistor in forward active region or active region. Active region. Okay, so you need to operate your transistor in active region so now at the same time previously they given a ask question on this when transistor is operating in different regions in which region it consumes to it consumes or it dissipates more power so in active region it dissipates more power why because here voltage and current both are moderate values in saturation region current is more voltage is less in cutoff region voltage is more current is less in this region voltage and current both are moderate values that's why it dissipates more power in this region okay now i am going to defining first biasing now biasing now my first point is first definition is Operating the transistor in active region is called biasing. Operating the transistor. Sir, transistor means default BJT. In active region. Is called biasing. Biasing. Okay, now this is our step one in the biasing. Step one also. Next, now what is active region? Default characteristics is CE characteristics. So it is VCE and it is IC. Okay, output characteristics of a transistor in CE mode. And this is the one of the plot. And this is another plot with the different values of base currents. Let us take it is IB and it is IB dash. Okay, or you can write this is IB minimum. But compared to this, it is more value. The reason to write this is IB minimum is this is the saturation region. If your IB is greater than IB minimum, then it entered into transistor entered into saturation region. Okay. This is your active region, active region, and this is cutoff region, cutoff region. Okay, your second step 
in biasing is so okay transistor is biased properly fine so once it is biasing in this sense it has to give some voltage at output vce and it has to give some output current ic then only you can set it as biased okay now that point is called operating point this point is called operating point operating point that means the point where your transistor is operating okay that much output voltage it is going to giving to you and that much output current it is going to provides you okay now i am going to taking operating point somewhere here no somewhere here no somewhere here no somewhere here okay any any point you can take in this region that is in active region but we have infinite possibilities we need only one point so i am taking the help of dc load line dc load line now what is dc load line <coughs> it is a line joining the saturating point and cutoff points saturating point it is a point in the saturation region is a saturating point and a point in cutoff region is a cutoff point this is cutoff point and this is saturating point now line joining these two is dc low line this is a dc low line okay now operating point should be in active region and on dc low line now your operating point should be in between this in between this point to this point so again between these two points you can place infinite points again your problem came to first condition infinite possibilities to solve this problem i am going to take the characteristic curves characteristic curve in this sense at a different values of base current you are going to writing the plot this is the at the ib1 let us take and this is take let us ib2 and let us take this is ib3 so ib1 ib2 ib3 now these are the intersecting points of this this is the intersecting point 1 2 and 3 now your operating point is any one of this intersecting point you may call this one and this one also i am not going to take this one why because this is the border of the saturation region and this is border of the cutoff region that's why i'm not going to give priority to these two now i'm giving priority to this one this one and this one these three i'm going to giving priority to this okay now so three points we have one two three so but we need only one point in this three if i'm taking operating point is if I am taking operating point is 1, okay, at output I get only this much part of positive and at negative this much part, portion of negative signal I can get. Okay, that means some positive portion of the output is going to be clipped off. Okay, if you are applying the, you are expecting your output like this, but for this portion of the input, your collector current is more than this. This portion takes your transistor into saturation at this point now your current is not get this part now your part is like this okay so positive portion is clipping if i am taking this is the output operating point similarly if i am taking operating point this one negative portion is clipping negative portion is going to clip so to get a proper output waveform operating point is taking at midpoint of the dc low line midpoint of the DC low line that is the operating point okay so once you fix the operating point next point is stabilization stabilization of that operating point I want to keep that operating point stable for keeping operating point stable what we need to do is see operating point is vce comma ic first you need to maintain a constant collector current ic 
once your IC is constant, automatically VC also going to be a constant. We check in different biasing circuit, there we check, we see how constant once IC is constant. But if you observe, collector current of a transistor, IC is defined by an equation, beta times IB plus 1 plus beta times IC naught. beta times IB plus 1 plus beta times IC naught. From this, we can write IC is a function of IC naught, IC naught and IB. So, IB value is transistor IB value is changing with respect to VBE what you are applying. VBE what you are applying. So, VBE and beta also, beta also. Now beta value of the transistor depends on three parameters. First one is aging effect. Second one is temperature. Third one is transistor replacement. You observed or not in your lab, you done experiment, uh, some part of the experiment you done with uh, some tra one transistor okay and after that if the transistor is damaged and if you are replacing the transistor with another transistor then you won't get that values okay because beta value is change beta value of the transistor is different okay because of that you are not getting that values exactly so that is a the problem there now anyway finally there is a chance of changing your ic value with respect to this thing now total change in ic i am going to be representing by tyler series so it is a dou IC by total change is delta IC equals to now I am writing it is dou IC by dou IC naught into delta IC naught. So delta and dou more or less both are same plus do VBE by do IC naught sorry do VBE sorry sir next one is VBE do IC by do VBE that means with respect to VBE we are changing uh, into delta VBE plus do IC by do beta into delta beta. Now, here this is represented by a stability factor yes and this is represented by a stability factor yes double dash sorry yes dash and it is represented by a stability factor yes double dash. In this three we are giving highest priority to stability factor yes because your VBE is a decreasing by increasing temperature for every one degree centigrade rise in temperature VBE decreased by 2.5 millivolts even for temperature is increasing 10 volts 10 degrees for 10 degrees rise in temperature VBE decreased by 25 millivolts 25 millivolts means 0 0.025 volts okay it is not that much variable so that's why we are giving low priority to that and beta point of view now we are feeling that we treat it now I am going to doing my experiment with a single transistor okay I am not going to change the transistor and more I am going to be maintaining a constant temperature in my room so no change in the temperature and the transistor what I am using is a newly purchased transistor new transistor it is not old one so beta effect is very less in that now we need to study effect of this now from this delta IC is written as S into delta IC naught plus S dash into delta VBE plus S double dash into delta beta. Now S dash is S is written as delta IC by delta IC naught at 
delta VBE equals to delta beta equals to con 0. That means VB and beta constant are simply dou IC by dou IC naught. Similarly, you can write equations for S dash and S double dash. Now here I am going to deriving an equation for stability factor S yes, for any circuit. Just before you written S is equals to dou IC by dou IC naught. Okay. Now we have an equation for IC. IC equals to beta times IB plus 1 plus beta times IC naught. Okay. Now differentiating both sides with respect to IC. Differentiating with IC on both sides. On both sides. Okay, now by differentiating this with respect to IC on both sides, so it is a uh, dou IC by dou IC equals to beta constant into dou IB by dou IC plus 1 plus beta constant into dou IC naught by dou IC. Now dou IC by dou IC is 1 is equals to beta times dou IB by dou IC plus 1 plus beta times dou IC naught by dou IC, dou IC naught by dou IC, it is nothing but a 1 by S, 1 by S. Now just write the S value from this. Now take this one this side, so 1 minus beta into dou IB by dou IC, dou IB by dou IC equals to 1 plus beta by S. Therefore, S is equal to S equals to 1 plus beta by 1 minus beta into dou IB by dou IC. So this is the standard equation for a stability factor. Standard equation for stability factor. S equals to 1 plus beta by 1 minus beta into dou IB by dou IC or DIB by DIC. You may ask one thing. So, directly once the IC is available, beta times IB plus 1 plus beta times IC naught. Okay. Why don't you go and take directly differentiate this dou IC with, IC with respect to IC naught? If I do that, we, I get directly S yes, dou IC by dou IC naught. Yes. But it is beta times dou IB by dou IC naught. So there is no direct relation between base current and IC naught. Okay, base current is at emitter junction. Okay, uh, base current is at base. Now IC naught is at collector junction. So there is no proper relation. Okay, so that's why we are not doing like this. We are doing like this. Finally, our stability factor equation is S is equals to one plus beta by one minus beta into dou IB by dou IC. In biasing, what you can expect? You can expect the expect the question on calculation of operating point and stability factor. Only two parts. And thermal runaway also is there. You can expect on operating point calculation. Operating point calculation. Operating point calculation. The second one is stability factor, stability factor, third one is thermal runaway, okay, so you can get problems or questions on these three, okay, so next session. We
continue from this point so next session we plan to complete this biasing biasing takes a uh, half an hour more okay and after this we go to fet biasing that is a half an hour a one hour complete for biasing and after that we go to transistor amplifiers next session we complete up to transistor amplifiers okay and uh, thanks for spending your valuable time with me okay and uh, don't forget to use my code vrow during subscription okay and hit the bell symbol for getting notifications and join our telegram group for latest updates okay of an hour upcoming videos and please give your valuable suggestion valuable comments on youtube to strengthen ourselves and to provide a better information to the upcoming students okay and please subscribe thank you thank you very much for spending your valuable time with us okay okay now prepare this properly and crack the gate thank you thank you very much